Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Which is peace on Yahweh's holy Sabbath day. Welcome to another holy convocation that Yahweh has enjoined unto us here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Um, as uh, uh, you guys know, the last couple of <coughs> Sabbaths we've been um, um, going into some uh, detail about uh, uh, dealing with the <coughs> excuse me uh, Gentiles and the um, 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 this whole scattering of the children of Israel. There are um, um, versions of uh, uh, this doctrine that seems to be uh, more spread out than uh, uh, we once uh, uh, believed. But there are. Um, it's basically one doctrine that has been uh, branched off into two. So we're going to um, um, have to go into a little bit more uh, on it to uh, uh, today. But uh, before we get started, brother, would you read the oracles and entreat the angel that stands in stands at the door to come in and sup with us and us with him, that we may make this a holy convocation by the angel's presence. First Peter chapter 4 verses 7 through 11 but the end of all things is at hand be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer and above all things have fervent love among yourselves for love shall cover the multitude of sins use hospitality one to another without grudging as every man has received the gift even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of Elohim if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim gives, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua the Mashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through chapter 5 and verse 4. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim for Yahshua's sake has forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim, as their children, and walk in love, as the Mashiach also have loved us, and has given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather given of thanks. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Keep your foot when you go to the house of Elohim, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with your mouth, and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim, for Elohim is in heaven, and you upon earth. Therefore let your words be few. Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 and 21. Behold, I send an angel before you, to keep you in the way, and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Revelations chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I have also overcame, and am sat down with my Father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. All right. Um, what we're going to uh, uh, do, today's sermon is entitled, Gentiles of Nations, and uh, uh, it's entitled that for a reason. We're going to read something out of uh, Josephus. Uh, the complete works. This includes the antiquities of the Jews and the wars of the Jews. This is the history detailing what the children of Israel uh, uh, encountered. And you're going to uh, uh, this uh, Josephus, of course, um, when you hear the name, it sounds like he is a, 
uh, 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 Gentile because it's Josephus Flavius. Of course, his real name was uh, Josephus Matthew, Matthias, um, but pretty much everyone that ends up assimilating into um, this uh, uh, um, Gentile culture uh, ends up finding themselves having to assimilate one way or another to avoid major persecution. Um, brother, I want you to go to, um, where well you see it on there, I'll go to page 897. Um, now when we look for uh, 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 Gentiles and nations, uh, first of all, the brother sent me a, a, a video and um, it was uh, pretty interesting. It went through a whole lot of things. Uh, um, uh, it took about an a, a hour and uh, so before I can see exactly where uh, they were going. The video was about an hour and a half um, before I could tell what they were uh, using uh, uh, certain scriptures for. But when we look up Gentiles and nations in uh, Strong's, we get the same number, um, H1471, which was Goy or Goyim in uh, plural. Uh, when we look at the Hebrew, they are a little uh, different. Um, uh, of course, that word giving us Gentile, heathen, nation, and people. So they're different uh, um, um, contexts in which that word can be used. Um, as the lineages of the sons of Noah are given, immediately the scripture goes into the exploits of the sons of Ham. We must understand that the people who we know as Africans today are the sons of Ham and were the first to rule and triumph on the earth. In fact, when we look at ancient Egypt, we see the Western nations constantly attempting to mimic Egypt's power, control, and influence over the world. The sons of Ham's conquering uh, came to a close with the conquering of the sons of Yafet, or what we know as Caucasians, or the Western world. The image of Nebuchadnezzar that was given to Daniel was a great image that depicted the next four kingdoms which shall rule the earth. This period of rulership will all be under the hands of the sons of Yafet, or who we know as Caucasians. So when we see the term Gentiles as it denotes any form of power or rule, specifically in the common era, we find it referencing the sons of Yafet or the Caucasians. The entire picture of righteousness is completed when the Israelites come to power and rule the earth. This will complete the rule of the sons of Noah as each one of the sons would have had their opportunity to rule the earth. So we understand that the earth was overspread by uh, Noah's three sons. Well, immediately in Genesis 10, as we read it, it starts going off into uh, um, how uh, uh, the earth, uh, uh, Babel and Iraq and all of these things that were done by the, the, the great hunter Nimrod, this was of the sons of Ham. And we can already see from the Egyptian pyramids and all of these things that that first uh, world domination happened in Africa by the sons of Ham. So when we get to Daniel, it is then dealing with the only other nation or family that is left to rule would be the sons of Yafet. Israel does not get to rule until the end. Every one of Noah's sons has to have their chance to rule the earth. This is why we are going through so much. What are you going to do when it's your turn? And you can't just do it how you think, how you feel, and what you believe. There has to be some uh, a way that you're going to govern the earth. How are you going to do it when it is your turn? But going through all of this, what we find is some families want to rule the earth twice. And the only way of accomplishing this is to become another family and rule with them. We've seen the, the, the same thing. I mean, I used to do it in school. You know, when they had something good in lunch, I try to swing back around and get back in that line, you know, because they, you know, they had that sweet pie that I wanted. So I get back in the line. It's like, when you're in the line, I was my brother, you know. <laughs> Well, this is the same thing that the Gentiles are doing with this doctrine. They have already had the, the whole prophecy concerning uh, 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 Daniel. You notice within that 
uh, uh, this whole thing of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He's breaking down these uh, different parts of this image. It is all Gentile nations that are ruling. You notice no part of that image contained any parts of Africa. They've already had the opportunity to rule the earth. They've already had their, there's no reason for him to deal with them. They've already had their opportunity. They're, what, matter of fact, the Gentiles are trying to mimic them. This is why all our houses are built like pyramids. You find nothing but pyramid buildings here. Go downtown. Every downtown city line and every city in America has a pyramid and a phallic symbol like the Washington Monument. Look on the back of the dollar, you find a pyramid with the all seeing eye of Horus, the Egyptian god. They are mimicking that because they ruled for so long. So when Yahweh is starting to deal with these other nations, when you're talking about power, there's no need for him to talk about the sons of Ham. They had theirs first. Immediately when we start reading Genesis uh, 10, we automatically see that their rule came first. So consider that uh, as we uh, 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 read. Uh, we have to remember what was asked of the Messiah. Um, it was asked to him, will you at this time restore the kingdom unto Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons with the, which the Father have reserved unto himself. So, Israel was already under the hands of the Romans. So, they had, they had changed hands. They had to deal with, you know, different uh, 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 captivities. They had to deal with different nations coming in. But this is all under that rulership of Yafet. Uh, let's, uh, we're going to read um, A Wars of the Jews. It's going to be book 6, chapter 9. And we're going to read The Invasion of Titus. Now when Titus was coming to this... Now you don't have this right here. This is not in the Apocrypha. We're going to go to the Apocrypha after this. Just listen to what uh, uh, he's reading right now. Go ahead. Now when Titus was coming to this upper city... He admired not only some other places of strength in it, but particularly those strong towers which the tyrants, in their mind, conduct, had relinquished. In their mad conduct. In their mad conduct, pardon me, had relinquished. For when he saw their solid altitude, and the largeness of their several stones, and the exactness of their joints, as also how great was their breadth, and how extensive their length, he expressed himself after the manner following. Now, um, a lot of people regard... Uh, Josephus as a traitor because of uh, uh, sometimes he, he tried to talk to the children of Israel to get them to uh, 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 you know give up and, and you know do all of these other things uh, but e even in the writing how he's you know referring to Israel uh, uh, fighting against uh, the Romans in a bad way he was allowed to write it's no different than what our people would do with those Negro spirituals and they'd be singing and the Gentiles wouldn't hear that they warning each other. They singing in the songs and the songs sound like one thing, but they warning that dude over there who's stealing that watermelon. Master coming around the corner. So they hear the song and know, hey, put the watermelon down, bro. There ain't no different when it comes down to allowing them who are ruling over you to allow your stuff to go through, you have to formulate it in a certain way. And these are things that we've, we still have to deal with today. You work in corporate America, you know that there are certain ways you're going to have to carry yourself. Go ahead. We have certainly had God for our assistance in this war. And it was no other than God who ejected the Yehudis out of these fortifications. For what could the hands of men or any machines do towards overthrowing these towers? At which time he had many such discourses to his friends. He also let such go free as it had been bound by the tyrants. And when we're left in the prisons, to conclude, when he entirely demolished the rest of the city and overthrew its walls, he left these towers as a monument of his good fortune, which had proved his auxiliaries 
and enabled him to take what could not otherwise have been taken by him. Mm -hmm. And now, since his soldiers were already quite tired with killing men, and yet there appeared to be a vast multitude still remaining alive, Caesar gave orders that they should kill none but those that were in arms and oppose them, but should take the rest alive. But together with those whom they had orders to slay, they slew the aged and the infirm, but for those that were in their flourishing age and who might be useful to them, they drove them together into the temple and shut them up within the walls of the court of the women, over which Caesar set one of his freedmen, as also Fronto, one of his own friends, which, which last was to determine everyone's fate according to his merits. So this Fronto slew all those that had been seditious and robbers, who were impeached one by another, but of the young men he chose out the tallest and most beautiful and reserved them for the triumph. And as for the rest of the multitude that were above 17 years old, he put them into bonds and sent them to, to the Egyptian mines. Right, so this explains how the children of Israel are getting down into Africa. I was talking to a, a, a friend of mine um, uh, this morning and uh, uh, he's in Israel um, uh, now and um, I was mentioning to him some of the conversations that I had uh, uh, had and he was like you know he mentioned something you know kind of funny and we laughed about it he was he was like okay what kind of sense does it make that you would run toward your enemies if they are being uh, when you talk about uh, uh, the nations that were coming against Israel and where they're coming um, why would they run toward the enemy? The, the way for them to run is down into Africa, further down, not run toward the armies that's coming at you. And I said, you know, that is fun. And we, we laughed about it, but it is amazing how, you know, the, what we're hearing from some of these doctrines is how somehow these, these nations of Israel turned into Gentiles, yet you don't hear the Gentiles bragging about these things that are written in these history books uh, that they themselves, you know, publish. They just don't tell you about it. Every History Channel documentary where they're quoting and talking about anything of the history they got from this book. But there's certain parts, just like this book, there's certain parts of that book that they don't want you to read. Go ahead. Titus also sent a great number into the provinces as a present to them that they might be destroyed upon their theaters. Right. And, and, and to this day, you know, our, our, our people, uh, football has, has gotten to the point where it's a little bit more civilized because they're not fighting to the death. But these are those theaters and those arenas to this day what our uh, people were thrown in. When you see these games and it's the, the lions against the bears. Yeah, it was a lion and a bear against a dude. And this guy had to fight to the death either against a lion or a bear. This was fun to them. This was their sport. They put us in and we had to play the sport to death. And when you see what's going on now, the, the, some of the football players, they have had to sue because of the aggressive nature of the game. They're getting paralyzed and coming down with all kinds of diseases because of so many head hits that the body can't withstand those things and they end up having all of these issues uh, uh, later on. This is their most uh, 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 subtle way of what they did then. They played to the death. Wasn't nobody living after they played these games. Go ahead. By the sword and by the wild beasts, by those that were under 17 years of age were sold for slaves. Now during the days wherein Fronto was distinguishing these men, there perished for want of food 11,000, some of whom did not taste any food through the hatred their guards bore to them and others would not take in any when it was given them. The multitude also was so very great that they were in want even of corn for their sustenance. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, sister. We are reading from the wars of the Jews. Uh, we don't we didn't pass that out. We are going to uh, read from the Apocrypha uh, after this. So just uh, uh, listen now to what he's reading. Go ahead, brother. 
Now the number of those that were carried captive during this whole war was collected to be 19... Oh, 90? 97,000, pardon me, as was the number of those that perished during the whole siege, 1,100,000. The greater part of whom were indeed of the same nation with the citizens of Jerusalem. Right. Um, so uh, specifically, 1.1 1. 1, uh, uh, million that they have killed and the rest they are, are sold to work in the salt mines. Somehow, when the, when the Gentiles tell you how they have become Israel, how is it that they leave out how many people they kill? How is it that they, 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 they leave out this invasion where it was them that came in and tore down Jerusalem to the bedrock? How is it that they miss that part? You need to know this when they come up to you and tell you these things. You need to know what kind of sin. Consider this. Now, they've placed people in the land of Israel calling these people the Jews, but we can see it was the very Romans that ejected the children of Israel. Now, what kind of sense do it make if you went through all of that to tear it down that you would turn around and go and put the people back in it? They put some people back in it, not the ones they took out. Go ahead. But not belonging to the city itself, for they were come up from all the country to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and we're on a sudden and we're on a sudden shut up by an army right so they come to keep the the, the feast and they use that against them knowing the culture so they already had to deal with the Macedonians the Greeks before uh, this then you have the Romans that come after them so this is coming from the Romans as you're reading here it says Caesar all right go ahead which at the first Occasion so great as traitorous among them that were came a pest, pestilential destruction upon them, and soon afterwards such a famine as destroyed them more suddenly, and that this city could contain so many people in its manifest by that number of them which was taken under Cestius, who being desirous of informing Nero of the power of the city, who otherwise was disposed to contemn that nation and treated the high priests, if the thing were possible, to take the number of their whole multitude. So these high priests, upon the coming of their feast, which is called the Passover, when they slay their sacrifices from the ninth hour till the eleventh, but so that a company not less than ten belong to every sacrifice, for it is not lawful for them to feast singly, singly by themselves. Right. So they're saying that this... this uh, a great multitude was just of them, but there were others that had came in. Go ahead. And many of us are, and many of us are, are, tw are twenty in a company. Mm -hmm. Found a number of sacrifices was two hundred and fifty-six thousand five hundred, which, upon the allowance of no more than ten that feast together, amounts to two million seven hundred thousand and two hundred persons that were pure and holy. For as to those that have the leprosy or the gonorrhea or women that have their monthly courses. Now, see, when we start reading stuff about people unclean and not being able to keep holy convocation, people say, man, what kind of mess you got going on? Right. When you read the history, you see that that was not allowed. When uh, 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 if they are unclean, they're not supposed to be in there. If you got any kind of uncleanness going on that separates you spiritually. Go ahead. Or such as are otherwise polluted. It is not lawful for them to be partakers of this sacrifice, nor indeed for any foreigners either who came hither to worship. Now this vast multitude is indeed collected out of remote places, but the entire nation was now shut up by, by fate as in a prison. And the Roman army encompassed encompass the city when it was crowded with inhabitants all right that's all that i want you to do and i wanted to make sure we got right to that part so you can understand who it is that uh uh uh, uh did this as we read the roman army uh somehow uh, these things seem to be uh, uh missed as we uh, get into this doctrine. And what this doctrine is, is it's a uh, two-headed doctrine. It's a Christian 
doctrine that uh, Hebrew Israelites have grabbed a hold of, uh, talking about how Ephraim has become um, the Gentiles, uh, because this term will uh, loosely identify heathens, um, uh, nations as well. So somehow they have used that doctrine to say that Ephraim has become the Gentiles. Now the twisted part of this, this doctrine is the Hebrew Israelites who take hold of it use that to say that there will be no Gentiles in the kingdom. Because they then claim that when it talks about Gentiles, it's talking about Ephraim or the northern kingdom. Okay. Now the doctrine they got was from the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are using it to say how they have become Ephraim. Now, why would they do that? So that even as they are ruling now under the time of the Gentiles, they are in the process of trying to conform themselves to be the northern tribes so that when it's time for Israel, because everybody knows that the Gentile rulership is coming to a close. So now they are preparing themselves to be transformed into Israel so that they can rule again. You ever wonder why out of all this time, We've heard a whole lot of things out of Farrakhan and the Muslims. Have you noticed Farrakhan put out a couple books all of a sudden saying that the Muslims are Israel. Now, why would he do that? You don't see everybody changing. Watch whenever you get you, 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 you watching some changes happen. Follow the money. Everybody is getting ready to get their self ready for the next phase that's coming in. Farrakhan put out two books, two or three books, right off the rip, talking about how uh, how how the black man is the 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 uh, uh, true Jews. Yet he still worships Allah. You ever notice everything that you see on the television? He's reading from the Bible, and you start asking yourself, "Well, what, what, how do I? I look at him, and he's not reading from the Quran." You know, I, I, I want to hear something from the Quran. I already know about that book. I, I read that book. Tell me about tell me about that other book you read. So I'm thinking I'm going to watch, you know, on the television. I'm going to hear him read something. No. He's dealing out of the Bible. Everybody's in the, in the process of transforming because they know what's uh, 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 coming next. Uh, let's go to 1 Maccabees in the Apocrypha. First Maccabees chapter two. No, first, uh, uh, first Maccabees chapter 2 and started at verse 1. In those days arose Matthias, the son of Yohanan, the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Yoreb from Jerusalem, and dwelt in Modin. And he had five sons, Yonan called Sadiq, Kadis, Simeon called Thias, Yehudas, who was called Maccabeus, Eleazar called Avaran, and Yonathan whose surname was Aphus. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judea and Jerusalem, he said, Woe is me! Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people, and of the holy city, and to dwell there, wherein it was delivered into the hand of the enemy, and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers? Her temple is become as a man without glory. Now, this part in Maccabees has happened uh, before what we read in the wars of the Jews. What we read in the wars of the Jews uh, was the final part of uh, uh, things that were happening. Go ahead. Her glorious vessels are carried away into captivity. 
Her infants are slain in the streets, her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation has not had a part in her kingdom mm -hmm. and gotten of her spoils? Right. So when we start talking about um, the punishment of the Gentile nations, you can understand why uh, Yahweh would deal with uh, uh, the sons of Yaphet first, but the other nations are going to uh, 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 suffer their, for their part in it as well. Go ahead. All her ornaments are taken away. Of a free woman, she's become a bond slave. And behold, our sanctuary, even our beauty and our glory, is laid waste, and the Gentiles have profaned it. Right. So when we look at that, it, it, it lets us know clearly uh, who it was. Uh, it was the, the heathens that profaned the sanctuary. We, we have gone through this and read. Let's go to uh, chapter 4. In 1 Maccabees chapter 4, and let's start that at verse 41. And I mean, when you consider the whole thing of people trying to um, say that um, Ephraim has turned into Gentiles, you have to look when it comes to specific judgment that happens why would Yahweh do that to uh, uh, Ephraim they're not in control of anything when you deal with what's happening here or what's going to happen it is judgment because of these things here go ahead verse 41 then Yehudas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress until he had cleansed the sanctuary so he chose priests of blameless conversation, such as had pleasure in the law, who cleanse the sanctuary and bear out the defiled stones into an unclean place. And when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offerings, which was profaned, they thought it was best to pull it down, lest it should be a reproach to them, because the heathen had defiled it. Wherefore, they pulled it down. Right. The first thing that the heathens like to do is then sacrifice a pig, uh, which... Um, uh, our people love to eat because it's been handed down to us by the Euro uh, uh, Gentiles as uh, 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 in all of their festivals the thing that they sacrifice uh, uh, the most is that pig so that's why all your holidays are, are, are filled with this whole thing of this pig it is part of their sacrifices go ahead verse 46 and laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar according to the former. Right. They took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar. If you have to knock, uh, 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 if you put your... Uh, hammer against it you have uh, defiled uh, the whole setting up of the altar I know that there are people who are watching I had a, a, a comment before that there's a reflection in this um, the top of this altar so you know the, the people think I'm doing some kind of magic trick or something this is a piece of granite if we back this up, it's wood under here, and there's one complete stone. This is granite stone that is polished. I am not doing any magic trick and showing some kind of reflection on this stone. This is what it's talking about. Several, a piece of stone. If you understand what granite is... When you, when you look at a, a somebody who has a granite counter, they have to make that in one whop. If they move it the wrong way, although it's very heavy, it'll crack just like this. So this is what you're looking at here. The reflection here comes from the stone. That's what's written in the book. We're not doing stuff just because I thought it was a good idea. There's a reason why there's a big stone on top of this. 
Go ahead. First Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 48. And made up the sanctuary and the things that were there with the, were within the temple and hollowed the courts. They made also new holy vessels and into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offerings and of incense and the table. And upon the altar they burnt incense and the lamps that were upon the candlestick they lighted that they might give light into the temple. <clears throat> Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the vase and finished all the works which they had begun to make. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month Caslu, in the hundred forty and eighth year, they rose up three times in the morning, two times in the morning, and offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made. Look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it, even in that it was dedicated with songs and citherns and harps and cymbals. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshiping and praising the Elohim of heaven, who had given them good success. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Right. And remember, as we read uh, uh, before, they have their so-called... Uh, uh, Hanukkah and Festival of Lights that they uh, reference to the Apocrypha and they claim that there was uh, uh, enough oil for one day and it burned for eight. Yet when we go in the Apocrypha, we don't find that story whatsoever. We find that um, they were coming in because they were not able to keep uh, uh, the feast that they then uh, the feast that already had passed, a seven-day feast, that they then did this dedication because they missed that seven-day feast. But now that turned into something altogether different. Go ahead. Verse 57. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with shields and the gates and the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. Thus was their very great gladness among the people for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Moreover, Yehudas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days, from the five and twentieth day of the month Caslu, with mirth and gladness. At that time also they built up the Mount Zion with high walls and strong towers round about, lest the Gentiles should come and tread it down as they had done before. As they had done before. This is something, so what happens is we read things where it says Galilee of the Gentiles and people are, you know, all, you know, mentioning this like this is some great thing. Uh, the, the, the holy city was completely under the rule of uh, the Gentiles. Think about when they said, you know, there was uh, uh, came the time for the taxing. When taxing come, you know exactly who is in power. Who you paying the tax to? Them the people in control. We ain't getting no tax money. No, we paying the tax money. So when they tried to get Yahshua to, to, to speak against the Romans, he said, give me a penny. He said, whose image and superscription is on there? He said, all right, well, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And that which is Elohim, you give to Elohim. So they were trying to get him to say, yeah, we should not pay taxes. So then they can turn around and condemn him to the Romans for saying, hey, this guy is in here teaching that we should not pay taxes. And, you know, they were going they, 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 they were going up and do something to him then because he messing with their money. So they were trying to, you know, get him to trap himself with his wording. Go ahead. And they set their garrison to keep it and fortified Bethsura to preserve it that the people might have a defense against Idumia. All right. Uh, and we say a defense against Idumia. When you get into uh, uh, the land and the temple that is there during the time of, of Christ, you find uh, uh, Herod is of Idumia, these Edomites who have been against the children of Israel. Uh, we're talking about them having control of that temple. Let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter 4. <clears throat> See, there's a reason why 
this was not included in the canon, but you notice they didn't, it's not like they didn't print it. They knew what kind of historical reference all of this stuff was. They just didn't want everybody to have access to it. Because see, some people try, but they're not going to try that much. You know, they try a little bit. So if it's not directly in front of them, they won't like go down the hall and look. You ever seen your kids that go look for something and they immediately say, I couldn't find it. <laughs> it's been two and a half seconds. You could not have looked for anything. And they look, they open the door and stuck their head in. This it. This it ain't in there, Dad. I look, I look everywhere. It's been 2.5 seconds. You couldn't have looked. Well, they know people the same way. They say, oh, yeah, 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 this is some good historical information. Keep it. Just don't put it in there. Put it over here. They ain't going to look over here. They don't want to know that bad. Just, just see it right there. Go ahead. Second Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 7. But after the death of Seleucus, when Antiochus, called Epiphanes, took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Onias, labored underhand to be high priest. Mm-hmm. Promising unto the king by intercession three hundred and three score talents of silver and of another revenue eighty talents. Besides this, he promised to assign an hundred and fifty more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise and for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen and to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochians. Right. So you talk about this whole thing of uh, uh, this thing of exercise, this was uh, this, this whole system of how the Euro Gentiles dealt with things. When we look at this whole Olympics, this thing of the games, we consider what's happening. We look at it now, it's one way. Do understand it was very barbaric during that time. To, to, to have somebody fight to the death it's some pretty barbaric stuff that if you lose, you die. That's not a game. It's a game to the people that's watching, but it's not a game to the person who's playing. Go ahead. You know, we don't even think about the word Olympics comes from Mount Olympus Olympi yeah. set up by the Greeks. Right. So we, we, we have to con consider that, you know, if they did uh, eventually, if some of them did good, of course, they would you know, get certain perks and things like that. But at the end of the day, they were still slaves and could be, you know, harmed at any moment. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's jump to uh, Luke. Luke chapter Luke chapter 21, and let's start this at verse 5. <clears throat> Luke chapter 21 and verse 5. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which you behold, the days will come, in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another. They shall not be thrown down. This is the prophecy, what was said by Yahshua. What we read in the wars of the Jews was the fulfillment of what he said here. This was the very first thing that we read. How they went in there, tore it down, left three towers. So when people try to tell you that they at the wailing wall, that it was a part of the temple, that's a, that's a lie. Yahshua said, it was you weren't going to see one stone left upon another. Then we just read. Show me that, Give me that book. 
We just read the history book that has it in there where they tore everything down except three towers. So that whole thing that they're talking about, that's one of the walls of one of those towers. It is not the wall of the temple. What they tell you is a lie. So they can go over there and shake their head and have it all they want to. They ain't doing nothing. It's a lie. And we got the, the, the proof that it's a lie in two places. We can look in this book. And we can look in the history of the antiquities of the children of Israel and the wars of the children of Israel. And it details that that's not what that is. But when you have people who are proclaiming to be another people, they need as many props as they possibly can. Go ahead. Verse 7. And they asked him, saying, Master, for when shall these things be? And what sign will there be in when these things shall come to pass? Now, what sign shall there be when these things shall come to pass? Remember, they were asking of Christ, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? So, they want to know, when are you going to free us? Because understand, they've already gone through the, 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 the Greeks. So now, the, they've done, dealt with the Greeks so much, you'll find that the Greeks now worship with them. There, you'll notice that they mention the Greeks in a different way than the way they mention the Romans. The Romans are the one ruling over them now. There were Greeks that had adopted their way of life. Go ahead. And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go you not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of the wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not, by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Right. Now, people, everybody want to talk about all of these things, uh, but nobody wants to discuss how the children of Israel were going to suffer all of these things. And we consider what has happened un uh, unto us. They will uh, uh, throw you into prisons. Understand, the prison system was invented for us. They didn't have the prison system, this whole industrial prison complex, before slavery was so-called abolished. They abolished one form of slavery and made another one. They first had the black codes, which were laws specifically made to imprison us. See, people want you to believe that, oh man, this is so much crime. That's why, you know, the black man is in prison. There were laws that did not come into effect. Some people went to prison because they were standing on the corner. And we're talking gone for 10 years. Some never came back because they put them in them chain gangs and worked them to death. Now have the other people who call themselves Israel, have them prove to you where they have endured such uh, such things. See, people will talk about Deuteronomy 28, but they won't mention the specific curses. Why? Because they can't prove where those things happen to them. Go ahead. Verse 13. And it shall, shall turn to you for a testimony. Set it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. Mm -hmm. For I'll give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Mm -hmm. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Right. In all of these places where the children of Israel were uh, scattered, we have the same issues. Look, find out what's going on in Brazil and in other parts of the world where our people have been scattered. They're going through the same thing. People go to Israel. And find out, you get shot down for, for looking just like us. Go ahead. Luke chapter 21 and verse 18. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess you your souls. Right. Although they do all of these things to the children of Israel, Yahweh is going to preserve us because of those covenants. 
He's not going to allow the nations to kill us off. Go ahead. And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that desolation thereof is near. Now, understand how prophecy goes in this uh, 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 deep manner because this happened and what we read, understand, remember we, we read in the wars of the Jews how the Romans come past the city, did all of this. So they're thinking, okay, this is immediate. There's another one that has to happen. Prophecy comes in dual ways. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. They shall be led away captive into all nations. This is what happens to the people that were in the land. So understand the things that we just read came after this. The stuff that we started with uh, that were in the wars of the Jews. Understand it happened. Uh, uh, that stuff happened after what's written here. We got a, a, a writing date of A.D. 33 here for Luke. We got a happening date of the wars of the Jews at A.D. 70. Okay? Uh, and it says they shall be led away captive into all nations. The people who claim they are, are, are the Jews were brought from Germany. Well, yeah, that's just said, well, how did you go? Were you slaves in Germany? No. They were taking over the economy in Germany. There weren't no slaves. So how you get there? You didn't get taken there. Right. See, all you got to do is backtrack. But do you allow somebody to tell you when you are dealing with historical things that you are racial? It's amazing how everybody else can deal with their history and never get called racist. When we deal with the historical facts that are here, all of a sudden, we're called racist. If you allow that to, to deter you, then you don't fail for the Jedi mind trick. That's that look to the left while your brother snatch your cake from the right. Hey, man, look over there. You just fail for a Jedi mind trick. You let them do that to you? But they can tell that story over and over and over and over. And each time the number that, that, that got killed just multiply and multiply and multiply. But as soon as you start talking about historical things, all of a sudden it's called racial. You have to learn how to pick this out when you hear it. That this is what they turn that into when you start giving historical data. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay, now, if people want to say that this is just the nations, you have to understand, okay, well, 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 who was in charge? We're dealing with the Romans. Okay, then, if the times of the Gentiles is what's written in Daniel, was their prophesied time to rule? Africans wasn't ruling. Nobody in Africa was doing any rulership. They have already had their time of rulership. It wasn't that Yahweh was leaving them out. They've already had their time of rulership. They've already ruled the earth. This time belongs to the sons of Yahweh. The children of Israel don't get to rule until the end. So that way, every son of Noah has had his turn. Go ahead. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and waves roaring. Right. Now, it says, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. People will try to tell you that, you know, this means something else. But when you look at this, it's talking about the redemption of the children of Israel, and it is connected with the times being fulfilled. If it's fulfilled, it's come to an end. So the end of the Gentile rulership is the beginning of the Israelite rulership. So just by that definition, 
There can't be the nation of Israel in Israel while the Gentiles are ruling. And as we see, there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity and the seas and the waves roaring. Do anybody remember reading about that in 1948 when those people went into the land? Does anybody remember the sun turning black as a sackcloth of hair, the moon turning blood red or whatever? Anybody? Because I, I don't remember reading or having any of that happen. But this is what's supposed to happen when the children of Israel take power. Right. Go ahead. Verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Right. Uh, it says that the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It's going to be knocked off that axis and wobble. And it's going to cause all kind of issues. None of that happened in 1948. Go ahead. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption draweth near. Your redemption draws near. So how can you have redemption and none of this has happened? See, we allow people to tell us these things and, you know, give us, you know, their sad stories and, and we should feel sorry for them. Feeling sorry for you don't mean you're supposed to have my land. I might feel bad for you. That don't mean I'm going to move out my house and give it to you. You know, I, I feel bad that that happened to you, but you can't live here. You know, that that that, that, that my place. Yeah, you got to get yourself another place. You don't get to have my. What do they say in the Middle East? They said, wait a minute. If you upset, I mean, if those people have suffered and they suffered in Europe, right? Well, then give them land in Europe. How do you give them land? How do people suffer in Europe? And then you give them somebody else's land. Do understand, there were people who had already settled there because of the absence of the children of Israel. That they went and just moved. There are people still in concentration camps. They just moved those people. Gave them all the weaponry uh, uh, Britain did. Set up everything. And then just walk out. And just let them have at it. Uh, let's go to Zechariah chapter 1. So when people try to tell you that Ephraim has become the Gentiles, you have to ask yourself, did, did, does Ephraim then march in and uh, run everybody out? In this current state, we can't run nobody out of nowhere. We, we don't have the arms that the Gentiles have. They, they have real we weaponry. What's happening in the land now? You got tanks going up against... These dudes got rocks. They throwing rocks at tanks. And that ain't nothing but frustration. Ain't nothing you gonna do to a tank with a rock. That's just straight frustration of what has happened to them. But you ain't gonna do nothing with no rock. Zechariah chapter 1, and let's start that at verse 12. Then the angel of Yahweh answered and said, O Yahweh of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judea, against which you have had indignation these threescore and ten years? Mm -hmm. And Yahweh answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry you, saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with, great je with a great jealousy. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. Uh huh. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Now, I was but a little displeased, but they helped forward the affliction. Go ahead. Therefore, thus said the Yahweh, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith the Yahweh of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Cry yet, saying, Thus said the Yahweh of hosts, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and Yahweh shall yet comfort Zion 
and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Then lifted, up mine, then lifted I up mine eyes, and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Yehuda, Israel, and Jerusalem. These are the horns which have scattered Yehuda, Israel, and Jerusalem. So you're dealing with uh, uh, this rulership of these nations, their power that they have come in and divided and scattered the children of Israel. Go ahead. And Yahweh showed me four carpenters. Then said I, What come these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Yehuda, mm -hmm. so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles. So when you talk about or somebody try to tell you that Ephraim has become uh, the Gentiles, you understand who has scattered the children of Israel. Go ahead which lifted up their horn over the land of Judea to scatter it. Right. And let's, we can get a little bit more specific here. Let's go to uh, 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 Yoel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. Right behind Hosea and before Amos. Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem. When I shall bring again the captivity. Bring again the captivity means cause to cease. This chapter is entitled, The Restoration of Israel. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. We understand that nothing could have been done unless Yahweh allowed it. Yahweh allowed it because of how the children of Israel have walked in his covenant. Go ahead. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Right. We just saw the book of Negroes on TV. We saw them selling People for cognac. They was trying to get, well, give me a barrel of this. We were sold for trinkets. We can find this in our history. No one else can. But when you start talking about this historical data, people are going to try to tell you that this is racial. This is history. We can prove where this took place. So we have prophecy that we can prove in history. It was prophetic when it was written. Go ahead. Verse 4. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? And we have to remember that uh, uh, it was first called Canaan land. This also gives us the, the opportunity to understand that the, the sons of Ham ruled first. For it was called Canaan land. Canaan comes out of Ham. Um, it was them that had the land before we got in there. So you have to ask yourself, why did they have it in the first place? Ham ruled first. So when you deal with Tyre and Zidon, you go back and backtrack them amongst the, the, the sons of Noah. And you find that they're under Ham. They were Hamites. So then we have the people who we call Africans here who he's talking about. Go ahead. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Uh huh. The children also of Yehuda and the children of Jerusalem have you sold on to the Grecians. Right. Very, very specific. That you have sold them unto the Grecians. Now, where can anybody else, like, like, like I said before, 
uh, people so-called come out of Germany, they want to claim that all of these people who come out of Israel just went up north or went up in Europe and they came, you know, back down. So you went in the very area of the enemy, but yet they didn't destroy you. And here it says that our people were sold unto uh, uh, the Grecians. And we have the Africans doing the selling. And then you have him saying he's going to have all those nations because they've taken a part. See? Some did this, some provided ships, some did that, some did this. Y'all always getting everybody involved. All we have to do is think about uh, 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 the situation in the garden. Y'all got everybody involved. Go ahead. You know, brother, even in chapter 4, if you want to look at the irony of all, the people in the, in the land right now are calling themselves Israelis, right? Mm -hmm. And the so-called people that they're fighting against are Palestinians. Mm -hmm. So-called Palestinians. Right. But if we look at it, their time of rulership left. You need to get out the land. That's why they're kicking you out. But right. they got in the land because they knew we weren't there. Right. They sold us out. Right. And 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 Yahweh is dealing with all of these situations simultaneously. See? Remember, Yahweh left people in the land just to prove whether or not we were going to do what we were supposed to do. Go ahead. That they might remove them far from their border. Verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Yehuda, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for Yahweh hath spoken it. Right. So we have to uh, 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 consider um, um, this thing. Um, jump to... Um, keep going, keep going. Verse 9. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Mm -hmm. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Right. So then you have all this, this heathen. You have... Uh, and when we're talking about this power and we're talking about the Gentiles, do understand. Yahweh has already included this heathen. He's already mentioned Tyre and Zidon being the ones who sold the children of Israel off. Then he's talking about these uh, 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 Gentiles. So if people want to say, you know, hey, it, it, it just means nations. Yahweh goes ahead and gets very specific when he starts dealing. We know that. Ham has already had their chance to rule. The Gentiles are ruling over them. All the issues and the problems that are going on in Africa, the Gentiles are running that. They're in control of Africa. They are the ones that's putting this group of people in power and that group of people in power. Go ahead. Did the cause your mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh? Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Right. So we read the same things. Jump down to verse 15. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And we see the same happenings connected to this redemption of the children of Israel. Go ahead. Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am Yahweh, your Elohim, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Right. See, it's strangers. Remember what we read. The, it shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. See, it's the Euro Gentiles that put those people there as the Jews. And those people, there's a mix between Edom and proselytes that are there. But those are, are roughly Gentiles that are there. Uh, go to verse 19. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Yehuda, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Mm -hmm. But Yehuda shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for Yahweh dwelleth in Zion. Right. Now, 
Uh, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 60. See, no amount of assimilation is going to change the, the, the uh, uh, DNA or the family uh, uh, structure. This is why when you read in Genesis 10, it says, you know, by their families, um, uh, no matter who those men uh, deal with or uh, who they marry, their offspring belongs to uh, uh, the male. This is how... Uh, 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 this is handed down. And we can see that automatically in the beginning of the book. The first thing that we find uh, 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 when they want to kill off the children of Israel, what do they say? Kill all the sons. See, the women will be absorbed into the culture. If they then uh, uh, reproduce with those women, the offspring will be their offspring. You know, that, that, that uh, 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 animal channel is, is, is a crazy thing. But you see a lion take over a pride, you watch what he do. Kill off all the males. Now, this is an animal. Now, he ain't sitting down and ain't, ain't nobody talk to him. Ain't nobody explain him nothing. He take over a pride, all the males get killed. They don't care nothing about the baby cubs. They don't care nothing about all them dying. Right. The women are absorbed. Because then all the offspring after that going to be his. Go ahead. Verse 1. <clears throat> Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But Yahweh shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Mm -hmm. Lift up your eyes round about, and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Right. Uh, this is, you know, the children of Israel have to be regathered. And I understand that that you have some that's, that's trying to put out this doctrine that the Gentiles will not attain unto their salvation. There's a reason why Yahweh even left these things in the hands of the Gentiles, knowing that it was their time of rulership. It was them that preserved the things that the children of Israel were given. Go ahead. Verse 5. Then you shall see and flow together, and your heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted onto you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come onto you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come to you. You shall have these things. Their wealth, their power, these things shall be given unto you. Now, if that's Ephraim, uh, uh, which are the scattered uh, uh, tribes of Israel, that ain't much of a force. They scattered just like the rest of Israel are scattered. How you going to... That makes no sense. Go ahead. The multitude of camels shall cover you. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of Yahweh. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto you. The rams of Neoboth shall minister unto you. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring my sons from far, mm -hmm. their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of Yahweh your Elohim, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified you. Right, and when we look at the ships of Tarshish, we look at who Tarshish is. Tarshish is Spain. This is why you will call Negro, because it is a Spanish word for black. It was the Spanish ships that brought you here. And Yahweh says it's going to be the Spanish ships that's going to take you back. 
So if you trying to get you a passport and get you a ticket, you all are you all you already on the wrong page. You didn't have no passport to get here. Go ahead. And the sons of strangers shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister unto you. For in my anger I smote you, but in my favor have I had mercy on you. Right. And the sons of strangers shall build up your walls. Uh, Israel have had to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, do hard bondage. See, this is uh, the the uh, uh, peace that is given to you for the hard bondage wherein you were made to serve. We work more than anybody to this point that now folk just don't want to work no more because our people have had to work for so long. Go ahead. Therefore your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring on to you the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought. Right. When we look in Zechariah 14. We find uh, all the nations have to come up. To keep uh, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. And during the Feast of Tabernacles. All men make an appearance. And no man can come empty. So these kings are coming up. To, to make a offering unto Israel. Now understand something. If you have kings coming from nations, then they're bringing a percentage of their GNP. Those are some pretty sizable offerings that they're bringing. See? See, while the, the, the Gentiles ruled over the children of Israel, uh, even during the time of Christ, they had to go and pay tax, right? So they had to, they had to go and pay fees being under those people. So we don't have to worry about trying to get no reparations. Yahweh got our reparations. Go ahead. It says chapter 60 and verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yes, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come on to you in the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Mm -hmm. The sons also of them that afflicted you shall come bending on to you. This is why they don't want certain parts to be read. See, those that afflicted you shall come bending unto you. You notice that the, 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 the people who are in the land calling themselves the Jews, you notice they never say that somebody is going to come and bow down to them. Because they can't produce who they were afflicted by. Only person they can say is Hitler. What? Is, is the Germans going to come? There's nothing that fits what's written in here concerning them. Go ahead. And all they that despise you shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet, and they shall call you the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Right. Is it not written in Revelation? I know them. Uh, which say that they are Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan. I will make them to come and bow down at your feet and to know that I have loved you. Now, why, why he got to go all the way out the way to say that? And then call them the synagogue of Satan. Because, see, they have an added book that they call the Talmud, that they call the oral law, and they have magnified that. Their oral law says that what the priests say is more important than what is written in the Bible so that the Talmud is over and comes first over what's written in the Torah or the Tanakh. So anything they want to do, if it's in the Talmud, it doesn't matter that the Tanakh, the Old Testament, says, no, you can't do that. If some priest said, it's okay, then the priest is has the authority to override Yahweh. Now, that's pretty deep right there. And they have straight passages in the Talmud that says, the writings of the priest override the Tanakh. Right. Go ahead. Verse 15. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through you, I will make you an e eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. 
You shall also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shall suck the breast of kings, and you shall know that I, Yahweh, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Yaakov. Now, consider, as we were in slavery, do you not understand how the, 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 the mother of a child was made to feed Massa's children with her breast milk? You got to understand the significance of what's being said here. This is their inner substance having to be given to you. Why? See, this is why the doctrine is that they're going to change families. They're going to change from being a Gentile to being Israel so that when it's Israel's time to rule, they can rule as Israel. This is why everything that we see, every documentary that we see, everybody in the whole book is white. But yet when we go and we do the history, hold on. They, they even show the Africans white. What? So the Africans white too? At some point, you just look and say, man, I ain't, we ain't in here no place. I, every documentary, you, you, man, when they show the Africans white, that's pretty deep. So he ain't, he ain't got no black Africans? Right. So that you begin to uh, uh, accept this line of, uh, uh, of thinking. Um, Ezekiel chapter 33. See, what we have to consider is uh, uh, what has been done to the children of Israel. And what people want to do is, let's just, let's just get past it. Hmm. See, that's, that's, that's that thing. You ever notice that people who do you wrong always have the same thing? Let's just move on. They don't want to deal with what they did to you. Let's just, uh, I mean, uh, I wish we could just move forward. We can Will you give me back my stuff? See, that's that, that twisted Christian dogma. We're supposed to just forgive everybody. Why are they stealing my stuff? I'm watching you climb in my window, and I'm supposed to be like, I forgive you. You should get the black one. It's more expensive. What? God says that make. That don't make no sense. But see, we've lived through this. Before we've watched Hebrews do other Hebrews wrong, and then their thing is let's just let's just move past it, right? Let's go to Ezekiel thirty three and let's read that starting at verse fourteen. And see, this is what the Euro Gentiles want to do instead of acknowledging. And see, these are all history books that we've read saying what was done to the children of Israel, rather than admit, okay. We, we did this to you. No, they just, let's, let's just get past it. Let's just. Now, other people can tell you the Holocaust story over and over. You ever notice if somebody start talking about slavery? Ah, man, now you're going to bring that up again? Ah, man, they're going to pull out the slavery card. So tired of hearing the slavery card. Man, why y'all going to get over this? How many times you ever heard them? You ever heard somebody say, Ah, man, you're going to pull out the Holocaust card? Why? You ain't never heard nobody say that. Right. Right. They turn around and see you. You say some stuff like that. Yeah. But they have you thinking that, yeah, we shouldn't talk about so they really just upset people. They got that. So now, black people won't even teach it to their kids. Right. Greg? You know, even with the power of media, whether we want to hear about the Holocaust or not from year to year, we have to deal with it. You better believe it. What were we told when Black History Month came up for our children? Well, what was our children told? The ones that are in homeschool. If you want to learn it. If you want to learn it, you can. Your yeah. parents going to have to teach it to you. Right. Right. But you're going you're gonna to hear about uh, uh, their history or his story. You're going to hear his story. He's going to tell you his story. Story. And when you come in here on the Sabbath day, I'm going to tell you ours. But imagine the people who don't come and keep the Sabbath day. All they hear is his story. That's why they believe his doctrine. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 14. Again, when I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die if he turn from his sin 
and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed. Right, right. People always talk about, forgive me, forgive me. But they don't want to acknowledge that they did anything. See? Then they give you that, the most sorry apology ever. Well, if I offended you, I'm sorry. You stabbed me. Of course I was offended. There's a knife in me. How can you say if I offended you? You know good and well what you did to offend the person. If I offended you, if I've done anything. If I've done anything. If you've done, you've done a lot of things. Right. That is not an apology. That is not owning up to what has happened. Go ahead. Walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Right. If the wicked restore the pledge and give again that, have, that he had robbed. Well, what if you rob somebody of their good name by telling a lie? You don't get to go and privately apologize to them people. How public would the lie you told? That's how public your apology need to be. You don't get to tell a lie on Facebook and then pull the person around the corner and tell them, my bad dog. Hey, hey, did you tell a lie on Facebook? I need you to go right back on Facebook and apologize for that saying like all them people heard that lie. Go tell all them people who you told that to. You need to go apologize to all them people. Go and tell those people. Don't come tell me. I heard the lie through somebody else. Let me hear the apology through them same people. Yeah, man, such and such told me, man, they apologize for telling that lie. Oh, good. See, that's how you give again what you have robbed. Go ahead. Verse 16. None of his sins that he has committed shall be mentioned unto him. You see that? If you deal with it right, you get restored right. But see, that's not what people want to do. See? What we have is folks acting like nothing was done to the children of Israel. People act like they didn't do nothing. Let's just move forward. We ain't got to worry about the past. It's in the past. It can be yesterday. It's in the past. It was less than 24 hours. It's in the past. Let's leave that alone. Did you make it right? Read. He has done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Right. Now, consider that. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 17. Because, see, people say, oh, that, see, yeah, folks are just unforgiving. Say, folks just want to hold on. Okay. Let's see what Yahshua say. See, this is what the folks want to come and tell you. And this is what this whole thing of, you know, all of this is going to happen. People are going to have to acknowledge what they did to the children of Israel. Luke chapter 17 and read verse 3. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against you, uh -huh. rebuke him. Uh -huh. And if he repent, uh -huh. forgive him. Okay, that is an equation. People just tell you, oh, if somebody do something to you, you know, the good thing is just to forgive them. That's an equation. If your brother sin against you, rebuke him. That means there is something that is said by you that causes that person to acknowledge that they have sinned against you. Not just put a bunch of rocks in your jaws and walk down the street. <laughs> Did you say something to that brother? Did you at any time cause that brother or that sister to think about what they have done? The brother might have sinned against you and didn't know it. And sin against you is not do something you didn't like. The definition of sin is what? Transgression of the law. Transgression of the law. Not the transgression of Pookie. Okay? It's not the transgression of Pookie. So, you don't get to say, my brother or my sister did something against me that I didn't like. That's not sin. Sin is not defined by what you like or don't like. Sin is defined by what's written in Yahweh's law. So, if they have sinned against you, remember Yahweh said, 
You have gone and taken your brother's land. You have done all of these things. For that, you are going to receive judgment. So understand when it comes down to the judgment of these Gentile nations, understand there are many good-hearted people who are accepting of this word, but then there are also those who have heard these stories and believe that they're actually going to be able to just insert themselves into the rulership of Israel. That would give them a whole nother a rulership. And it's not going to happen. Uh, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 11. And see, when people pick up this doctrine, they really don't understand what it's for. So then you have Israel picking up part of this doctrine that that Ephraim has become the Gentiles, but they don't understand why uh, uh, some Gentiles have put forth this doctrine. They have put forth this doctrine so that they can become the rest of Israel. You have to consider something. All of the people in the land now all call themselves Jews, which is only those few tribes, Benjamin, Judah, and Levi. So then what? And it was the Gentiles that put them in there. So they know what? This lie leaves nine other openings for another lie. So now the Gentiles say, well, we don't put them there as the Jews. That leaves nine other openings, so we're going to be those other nine tribes. Right. See, this has been planned for quite some time. Understand, there's a prophecy given about the land of Israel, and it's much bigger than that little sliver that's there. This is what they ultimately want. That encompasses about four or five other countries. We're talking Iraq, Syria. It's... it's uh, bits and pieces of all that a nice from the river Nile to the great river Euphrates. That's much bigger than what's there now. So understand what they have their eye on. And it's not that little piece that you keep looking at. That ain't what they got their eye on. Uh, Romans 11 verse 12. Start that at verse 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles... How much more their fullness? Right. And people keep trying to tell you that the fullness of the Gentiles means something else. The fullness of the Gentiles is their prophesied time to rule the earth. Remember, Ham has already had his chance to rule the earth. This time when it's talking about these Gentiles or the heathen nations, the only family left is Yafet. Israel don't get a chance. The Shemites are not getting a chance to have somebody from their family rule the earth as of yet. Go ahead. For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. Mm -hmm. If by any means I may provoke emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Right. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if you boast, you beareth not the root, but the root you. And that's exactly what has happened. There's boasting against the branches. Every documentary, everything that has been put forth, they don't include you in any of it. They have boasted against the branches. We can show our heritage through uh, 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 Deuteronomy 28. We can show our heritage through the culture, through the curses that were uh, 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 written. This boasting against the branches say, we're going to become Israel. We're going to bypass your order. See, the whole part of boasting against the branches is we can deal with the word without you. And it's not going to happen. This is why Yahweh said, I'm going to regather you and I'm going to make the nations know that I 
I have loved you. Why does he got to go all the way out to show that? Because they think that they can boast against the branches. They think that they can waltz in there without you. And it ain't going to happen. If they get in, they got to go with you. They don't get to bypass you. They don't get to not accept who Israel is and how Israel has suffered. Is there an opening uh, 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 to the other nations? Yes. But you can't bypass the door. According as it is written, he does not come through the door. If he comes through any other way, he's a thief and a robber. Why else would anybody else come through your window? Anybody who's supposed to be there came through the door. If somebody came through the window, they are there to steal and destroy. Why, why would you crawl through my window? Go ahead. You know, even reading verse 15, it shows you, you know, the casting away what happened first. Mm -hmm. And the receiving of us, what's supposed to happen next. Right. You know, so, you know, they, you know, adding on to what you're saying, they have to receive us. Yeah, so. And see, that's the thing. People want to, this is what the boasting against the branches is. They don't want to acknowledge any of that. See, we're talking about, you know, straight doctrines of how Ephraim has become the Gentiles, yet nobody wants to deal with who scattered Israel. And he, we, we, we've gone through and, and read it. But there's absolutely no acknowledgement of any of these things that were done. See? So instead of saying we're going to become spiritual Israel, they're not dealing with that. They say they're going to become natural Israel. They say they are grafted in no matter what without accepting or even acknowledging what was done to Yahweh's people. And Yahweh's not going to allow. Go ahead. Romans chapter 11 and verse 19. You will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Right. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Mm -hmm. And you standeth by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if Elohim spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not you. Uh-huh. <clears throat> For if Elohim spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not you. So then they were warned not to boast themselves against uh, the children of Israel. Um, this, this, uh, uh, uh. Uh, casting away of the children of Israel was the opening of the door to the Euro Gentiles. But you can't then boast against them and that you're not going to accept who the children of Israel are. Uh, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. Right. So we have this prophecy of Israel being set in their own land. Go ahead. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Uh-huh. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. Right. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So you have to ask yourself, how can this be fulfilled at this current time? Uh, for the people who are in there cannot produce any ca uh, 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 people that they were held captive to. They can't even, you can't say Egypt. Remember, it says, the prophecy says, I will send you, uh, the curse says, I will send you into Egypt again. See, all of this wasn't given until after the Egyptian captivity. So it, it was written, I will send you into Egypt again via ships. So this Egypt is bondage. We were spread across uh, uh, the globe in these ships. You can't spread across the globe by walking. So they claim, you know, they migrated here or migrated there. You can't walk the earth. 
I know there's a little kung fu movie, Kane, where you just walk the earth. You can't, you can't, you can't walk the earth. Two later, you're going to hit some water. What you going to do? Go ahead. You know, even, even dealing with the length that uh, Hitler dealt with them. Right. That, if they even call that captivity, that captivity don't even match the years of captivity. That Not we were, at all. That we were supposed to go into. Right. Years, right. They didn't even go through probably 10 years of what they went through. Right. When you, when you deal with it, it does not add up at all to any form of captivity. Then on top of that, Deuteronomy 28 is very specific in what things the children of Israel will suffer. How their kids will be taken away from them. How they would be, you know, uh, 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 hung from trees and allowed the birds would pick their flesh. None of this happened to them. None of it. But when we say it, we get called racist. No, this is historical, not racial. But if you allow somebody to tell you, that's like, you know, somebody comes and they come to your house and say, this is my house. And you say, no, this is my house. And you go and pull out the deed. You see that? That's on my name. Oh, you a racist. <laughs> what kind of sense that man? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get the paperwork. This is this my house, man. This is, this, this is, this is showing the history of when I signed and started paying. You ain't never a racist. That's all you is. You racist. Pull out the deed. Can't stand you. If you allow somebody to talk you off your deed, you don't deserve to have a house. There's one thing. If somebody going to steal it from you, they going to do, if they able to talk you out of the deed of your house, you don't deserve to have no house. And if you allow somebody to talk you out of your heritage, if you allow somebody to give you some twisted form of doctrine, and you allow them to talk you off of this, with all that our people have gone through and suffered, what did it say about Esau that he gave up his birthright for some pottage? And Yahweh, you don't deserve to have it. See, he was, he was wicked even before he did it because Yahweh saw what was in his heart. You willing to give it up just because you hungry right now? You willing to give up your legacy for whatever you can gain at that particular moment? You don't deserve to have it. Go ahead, brother. Finish that. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that Yahweh shall give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and from the hard bondage wherein you was made to serve. Right. Uh, 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 it shall come to pass that he will give you rest from the hard bondage wherein you were made to serve. Uh, uh, this whole thing about the, the Ephraim becoming uh, uh, Gentiles is one of the most ridiculous things that uh, uh, I have heard in quite a while um, in uh, 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 this this word but what we're seeing is our people getting a piece of this Christian dogma but you have to consider that there are many Hebrew Israelite groups that are not Hebrew Israelites at all they're Christians they they, they, they don't they, they use the term Jesus how you gonna be an Israelite and still deal with pagan names and call the Messiah a pagan name while calling yourself a Hebrew name. That is magnifying yourself against Christ. How you going to do that? I mean, we have at least common respect in our house. You, When you call your mama or your daddy, you call them either mama or daddy. You, hey, Charlotte. Charlotte. See how that go over with you. Go ahead, go, go to your mama's house and call her by her name. See how that worked out. What kind of respect you got? You just going to sit there and call your mama by her name? There, there's some other people can call her by her name. Not you. There's a certain level of respect. Where's your respect for Christ? That you're going to call him by the name that was given by the very nations who scattered Israel. Where 
Where's your respect for Christ? No doubt it's denying him. It is denying the very one who have paid the cost for the children of Israel. Well, that's all that we're going to do for today. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.